Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make this star quilt block. Now I chose to put my star into a table runner, but you don't have to do that. I'll show you some layout patterns of other things you can put this star block into. And you can make it any color that you like. Now before we get started, I want to remind you, follow me on Instagram for behind the scene photos of all the different projects that I'm working on for future videos. And also check out my Facebook page. Don't forget to click on like and I love reading your comments. So please leave a comment below. Okay, let's get started. For my table runner, I'm going to make it into a star slash flag table runner and this is the layout for that you can make this this section here any length that you like mine finished at 12 inches by 55 inches or if you wanted to you can make this any color you want you can make it pink uh, blue green yellow orange and put a star at each end and then select one large piece of fabric to be in the middle and again the blocks are 12 and a half inches before they're put into a project so you would just cut this fabric here 12 and a half inches wide or if you wanted to make a pillow you could put any kind of border around it turn it into a pillow or a placemat put a little bit of fabric on each side make that placemat any size you want and you can even put it in a tote bag to make this star table runner, this one finishes at 12 inches wide by 55 inches long. If you just want to make the star block, this is what you'll need right in here. It will have a finish size of 12 inches when it's put in whatever project you want to use it on. Or before you put it in a project, it should finish at 12 and a half inch square two different fabrics. My A fabric, I used white, cut eight, three and a half inch squares, cut one, six and a half inch square, and for this particular fabric, you'll need a quarter of a yard. For my B fabric, I used blue, you'll need one eighth of a yard, cut four, three and a half inch squares, and four, three and a half inch by six and a half inch rectangles. If you wanna make this into a flag table runner, for the stripes, you will need two different fabrics, red and white. Cut three two and a half inch by 42 and a half inch strips. You'll need one quarter yard. And then your white, cut three two and a half inch by 42 inch strips. And again, you will need one quarter yard. Fabric for the back of the table runner, you'll need to cut a piece that is 12 and a half inches wide by 55 and a half inches wide. I recommend though that when you're done with your table runner top piece, measure it first before you cut this fabric out and whatever your, yours finishes at, cut it that size. You need approximately three quarters of a yard. Cotton batting or use iron on fusible interfacing and use heavy iron on interfacing. Again, you're going to need a piece that's approximately 12 and a half by 55 and a half inches. Cotton batting, you can buy it off of the large bolts. You can also buy it in packages. Just make sure that if you buy it in the package that it's going to fit this size. Same thing with your Pellon brand heavy iron on interfacing. You can buy it off of large bolts or you can buy it in packages. This is my fabric A. This is the star fabric that I'm using. This is a three and a half inch square. So on all of your three and a half inch squares, turn it over to where the back of the fabric is facing up at you. Draw a line from corner to corner. So place your ruler at those corners and then draw a line. Take your fabric B, three and a half by six and a half inch rectangles and place one of the three and a half inch squares in one of the corners. Line it up to where the line is going this way from the bottom corner up to the top center. 
then stitch next to the drawn line. Stitch on this side of the drawn line. Do not stitch on top of the line, but very close to it. Then take your ruler, place the quarter inch line on top of your seam line, and then take a rotary cutter and cut this part off. Go to your ironing board and press this seam, making sure that this seam is going out in that direction. Fold this over and press and make sure again that that seam is going towards your half square triangle. Then take a ruler and line it up on the edge of the fabric B that is three and a half by six and a half inches. If there's anything sticking out on this side and this side, then go ahead and trim it off. So I have a little bit there and then there's a little bit over here. Take another square three and a half inches of fabric A, place it in the opposite corner and the line again is going from this lower outside corner up to the center here and these two pieces will overlap up here. Stitch it down going next to the drawn line and you're going to stitch on this side of the line. Again, do not stitch on top of the line but right next to the line. When you are done, cut this side off. So again, you're going to place your quarter inch line on your ruler right on top of that seam and then trim it off. Then press this seam at your ironing board, fold this over and press to where the seam is going out that way towards the half square triangle. Then verify that it is still three and a half by six and a half inches. So again, place your three and a half inch line over on this side. Check to see if anything is sticking out. And I just see a couple of little tiny things. When you do this, it's just going to help everything line up better if you always check and verify several times over. Make four of these. Place your six and a half inch square of fabric A down here in the middle. Take each one of your blocks you just completed and put it one on each side of that square. Take your fabric B three and a half inch squares and place them in each corner. Take each row separately and stitch it together. So bring front sides together, stitch one quarter inch, and the same thing here, one quarter inch, and continue doing that, placing them on the edge, stitching one quarter inch, and then this last row. After stitching, press your seams and I'm turning it over to the back side so that you could see the direction in which I pressed my seams. On the center block here, I press my seams going away from the center. On the two outer rows, I pressed both seams going in towards the center and the same one here. Bring rows one and three on top of the center row and match the seams. The seam on top goes in the opposite direction than the seam on the bottom. Place pins at each seam to hold it in place. Then stitch a quarter inch seam all the way across that edge. When you're done, press your seams, and I've pressed both seams, this one here and here, going away from the center of the block. When you're done, check to see if the block 
came out to 12 and a half inches square. If there's anything sticking out on any side, I recommend that you use your rotary cutter and trim it off. If you are going to make a flag table runner out of this, then take your C and D fabrics, bring front sides together, pin and stitch one quarter inch seam across there. Then when you're done, press the seam on the back side, unfold and make sure you press the seams all going in the same direction. Bring the two sections front sides together and line it up across this edge. Pin and stitch one quarter inch seam. Then press the seam on the back side. After stitching, press the seam on the back side. Then unfold it and press on top. And I've pressed this seam going towards the stripes. You can either use fusible iron-on interfacing and fuse it onto the back side of the table runner, or you can use cotton batting in between your fabric for the back and your tabletop piece right here. If you want to use the iron-on interfacing, just follow the instructions that are on the package for fusing, and I'm using heavy iron-on interfacing by Pellon. If you are using the fusible interfacing, place the fabric for the back front side up and place your table runner top front side down. Go ahead and place pins to hold the fabric together and then go around all four edges and cut the fabric to be an exact fit. If you want to use cotton batting in place of the fusible interfacing, place your cotton batting down first. Take your fabric for the back of the table runner. Place it with the front side facing up. The pretty side is looking at you. Then take your table runner top piece, place it down. Then I suggest you place a few pins around the table runner just to hold the fabric in place. Then line your ruler up on all four edges and trim the fabric to be an exact fit. Place pins around all four sides. So place pins right along the edges and on one side you're going to leave an opening that's larger than the width of your hand because you're going to be turning this front side out so make sure you leave that opening there. Place a pin on each side and back stitch on each side of the opening. So start down in this side of the opening. Do a quarter inch seam around all four sides and when you come back to this pin then back stitch. After stitching, then trim some of the fabric off the corner. Trim it down to about an eighth of an inch wide. Be careful not to cut through your stitches. So I just usually go straight across like this at a diagonal. I'll take a little bit off on each side of the corner. And do this on all four corners. Reach inside of the opening and begin pulling the table runner front side out. After you turn it front side out, reach inside with something somewhat pointed, not too sharp, and poke your corners out. At the opening, fold your edges in one quarter inch and pin closed. Then stitch close to the edge all along here. Give your table runner a good pressing and make sure your edges are all lined up. Smooth everything out. Place pins along the seams on the inside of the star and do stitch in the ditch. That's where two pieces of fabric come together. The seam is the ditch. 
So in order to hold everything in place so that it doesn't come apart when it's being washed or used, you would stitch in this ditch and stitch right along this seam, the one in the center, and here, then go along here, here, and here, and also do the little diagonals on all of the star points. On the stripes, scatter pins to keep the fabric from shifting apart while you're stitching, and do stitch in the ditch on all of the seams. I would really like to know your thoughts on this video, so please leave a comment or leave a suggestion for a future video. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram for behind the scene photos of future projects that I'm working on. And also check out my Facebook page. For more sewing projects, such as other table runners, pillows, placemats, and tote bags, play this video until a green screen appears and then click on the links. If you like this video, please click on thumbs up and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Click on the bell and enter your email address so you receive email notifications about my latest video. If you're not receiving those email notifications, go to your cell phone or iPad, click on settings, and turn notifications on. This is Scotty, this is Maria, this is Jamie, and this is Manny. Bye-bye, see you later.